Hello everyone and welcome to Media Gentlemen. My name is Chris Cabea. Today I have the pleasure to discuss with a good friend of mine. He's also our business partner. His name is Julian Lajoie. He's the founder and creative director at Lajoie. Enjoy, guys. <laughs> It's no secret that details are the key to any great piece of art and being an artist is about using the best mediums and methods to bring ideas to life and to their fullest potential. At La Joie, the belief is that life itself can be looked at as a piece of art and by focusing on the details of your life, you will strive to reach your fullest potential. Passion sees detail equally, ambition sees vision clearly and motivation sees it too. Jordan or Mr. Lajoie, like I like to call you. Uh, I happen to know your, your brand because I'm a huge fan, obviously, of what you do, and that's no secret, you know that already. Uh, but for the people that are watching right now, can you tell them a little bit about yourself and the story uh, of your brand? Um, it really goes back about three years. I uh, quit my job in finance, okay. moved to Australia, okay. I worked at another job there, but I found that I had a lot of free time on my hands. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like got back into working with a lot of like creative arts, like painting, um, just doing video, that kind of thing. I needed something to like really sink my teeth into though. So too much I, free time on your hands. I had too much free time on my hands. <laughs> Um, which was nice. It was cool uh, to kind of like reconnect with my passions. Mm -hmm. um, but I needed like something more, something new. So I decided to like try working with leather. Okay. And uh, it was something like right from the very beginning that I could see that there's like way more uh, opportunity with this than I even know. So like I started just making like little like card holders, wallets, that kind of thing. But as it was happening, it was snowballing. Like I could think like, I want to make this, 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 this. What if I use these colors? What if I use a thicker leather? What if I, you know? Um, there's just- Your imagination so, was- It was just running crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, like from that point on, like it was, it's been uh, to this day, something that just never gets old. Something that I, that I love to do and it excites me. Great, great. But uh, you told me uh, that a friend of you actually got you into the leather, leather business. Uh, that's true actually. Um, I had a friend that was in Toronto at the time mm -hmm. and uh, he was originally the one that was, he approached me about kind of running his Canadian brand in mm -hmm. Australia for him. Uh, so I was kind of just taking his name and a couple of the patterns that he was doing mm -hmm. and that really helped me kind of uh, get an idea for like how to construct different products uh, and it just gave me like a starting block mm -hmm. per se um, but from there from yeah from there uh, I kind of like started developing my own designs mm -hmm. and was taking it a little bit further than you know I could see like my ideas were going one way and uh, in a different direction from his brand. Mm -hmm. So when it was time to come home from Australia, I just uh, like thought like, okay, we're gonna be two people in the same country now. I don't wanna be like clashing. So we just respectfully went our separate ways. ways. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, how did your parent react when you announced <laughs> them that you were quitting the financial world in for basically create your own brand? Uh, okay, the, my parents, the way that they reacted was a, very similar to the way that they reacted when I told them that I was gonna start in finance. Okay. A lot of questions like, well, what are you gonna do? Um, what are you gonna do for money? What if you don't get any clients? What if you don't make any sales? Like they're, they're parents, you know? Mm -hmm. So they wanna make sure that I'm gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were, my mom, uh, for example, was more excited this time around though because she's always been the one that's been saying, you know, you're, I think that your talent is with art and you should do something more creative. 
so she was a little bit more um, open. She was more open to it, and but they've. I mean, at the end of the day, they're they've always been really supportive of me, no matter what it is that I'm getting into, whether it's finance or moving to Australia with no agenda, or you know, coming back to Canada to. Quebec to start a leather goods company. That must have been a crazy experience, <laughs> uh, moving to Australia without knowing uh, what, what you were going to see and everything. Like, Of course, but it was uh, it's exciting, it's the adventure and that's, of course. You, know, you get one round, so. You like adventures? Of course. Dope, <laughs> dope. Uh, earlier this year, you started a, kicksta a Kickstarter campaign uh, and you successfully reached your goal of $10,000. Mm. So huge congratulations for that, my man. Thanks, man. How did you came up with the concept for the Kickstarter campaign and what are you planning to do with that money? Uh, well, the thought and the concept of the Kickstarter kind of came from, like I just wanted to do something to increase my brand awareness to the people that I already know really, like people from my past that maybe I haven't spoken to them mm -hmm. in years and years, like since I had been overseas for so long, for example, and now I don't live anywhere near my old friends and my old warm market. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of do something that would give me an excuse to introduce them to what I'm doing now. So I did the Kickstarter like as a way to tell the story of what I've been doing for the last three years, what brought me to this point, and give me like a, a an icebreaker to start that conversation with them. You wanted to start fresh or? Like, I wanted to, you mean with the... Like a the, new beginning, like a new introduction, a reintroduction of the brand or? Well, a, just an introduction period okay. to like what I'm doing now and what I've been up to for the last few years. Nice. So uh, I thought that a Kickstarter would be cool because it'll be like an excuse to make a cool video. We yeah. do this campaign. We did like an exclusive a capsule collection just for the people who contribute to that. Mm -hmm. And it's like exciting for one month. Uh, talk to a lot of people, um, do that and it kind of like helps uh, jump to the next level as, the, as a brand. Like take me out of my spare room in my house, put me into like more of a professional environment this like, like this. Um, you know, help uh, get some funding for the second collection that I'm working on, uh, packaging. Those are the things that I'm gonna be spending the money on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it all kind of like works together nice it just, nice. It just worked out yeah uh, i actually reread your kickstarter bio last night okay and uh you wrote and i quote uh, i love food hip-hop running and montreal uh, can you please elaborate on that uh, so let's start with the food what's your favorite meal well okay if i had to say my favorite yeah, meal, just one meal in montreal I'm gonna like narrow it down to the laksa soup at Sate Brothers. Okay. <laughs> nice. And uh, who's your favorite hip hop artist? Favorite hip hop artist is Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar? Yeah. Why? Because he's he's like the he's a true artist. He's like okay, think of I was just having this conversation this morning about Tesla. Okay. I was looking at the new specs for their new cars and what it seems like they're doing is completely like going blind to what every other car company is doing and saying what does what should a car in 2016 do you know they're like rejuvenating their industry and Kendrick Lamar i feel is doing the same in hip hop because he's like taking it a step further like to with his last level. album his visuals for his performances, his music videos, instead of like adding it, using it to add a visual to a song, he's using it to tell the stories in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, um, just a sec. And why do you love Montreal so much? Uh, I love Montreal because it's, I feel like Montreal is probably the most unique city in all of North America. Really? Yeah. Shit. It's cool. The culture is, uh, for so many reasons, it's it's very different. Like, there's so many artists here, first of all. So the culture and community that, 
like you and I are in mm. is is really it's thriving here yeah, yeah, for yeah. one I mean it's like actually a bilingual place my last mm. name is La Joie La Joie and you so don't like, speak a word of it well now yeah, right now like you can <laughs> you can <laughs> say some word but like, like when I first met you like <laughs> shit yeah um it's gotten a lot better yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know it's the per perfect place to kind of like reconnect with my family's heritage and mm. uh like relearn the language and you know base my brand here mm. um, the food's great like it's just a great place nice but yeah. even me like my english got better i hope yeah since the first time we, we met <laughs> nice nice there you go so uh you know, one thing that I definitely uh, notice about you is the passion that you have for uh, what you do. And uh, uh, what's the thought process behind creating new pieces? And uh, where do you get your inspiration from? I guess it's not really different every time. What happens is I just try to like the same thing we were just talking about with Tesla, for mm -hmm. example. Like if I'm making a card holder, I try to first of all like disregard any card holder that I've ever seen before and like strip it down to what it needs to do first of all like it's so the functionality it needs to like hold cards of course and after that what else would I want it to do like is it got to be easy to fit in my pocket easy to pull the stuff out of um, you know that kind of thing uh, how is it gonna wear over time with the leather with the materials how's it gonna look uh, like the design process is a very long and like grueling process for each one. Uh, it's like the holy, the holy spine of the whole operation. You know. Would you say that you're your toughest critic? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, it's a daily thing that, like, I'll get so far, or sometimes even finish a product, mm. and if the stitches aren't straight on it, or if there's a scratch. Or, uh, you know what I mean? Like the, the smallest thing, and maybe it's only me that notices it. Mm. If I if I see it, it's going to be like... Amplified. In my eyes, it's amplified. And I can't give it to like a customer like that. You feel you know? cheap. Like. <laughs> yeah, like that's not what the brand is for. Like mm. the backbone, the reason like the what, reason like why everything's hand stitched, for example, it takes, yeah, like it takes so long to hand stitch it versus send it to a manufacturer and get them to do it. But that is the reason why it's hand stitched. Like I can't give it to the customer knowing that there's a better way to make it or like knowing that there's something else that I could have done to bring it to the next level. Mm. Like if you go online and Google it like I did for days, like I was, believe me, I was trying to find an excuse to run the stitches through the machine instead and no matter how many times you ask the question and how many pages you go through on Google the answer is always that it's gonna last longer and perform better if you hand stitch it mm -hmm. so I mean in my mind there's that's that kind of just answered it like you can't get any better so I'm gonna take the extra time and I'm gonna hand stitch everything dope dope Jordan, what's a typical day uh, in your life and uh, how challenging it could be at times? Well, like a typical day, uh, man, uh, it's not, it's different every day. Like I wake up, I go running, I come to work, I try to get here before eight o'clock and uh, I just like do whatever needs to be done. Like I'm developing new products, making orders, doing interviews, doing meetings, like it's this is like what I love to do and this is what's driving everything mm -hmm. so of course there's challenges every day but that's like that's the whole thing there's challenges even if you like work at a call center you know okay um, but for me the challenges are like the fun parts that's where you learn and that's where you grow like to overcome a challenge is a, a good feeling mm -hmm. so I really I thrive in that. In your opinion, what are the key ingredients to uh, uh, to create a successful business? Uh, the key ingredients to a successful business, like there's obviously not 
like the only the, the most key things is probably just to have passion for what you're doing mm -hmm. to know more about it than 99.9 percent .9 of the other people out there like you need to be a master of your domain and you need to to love it to the point that you want to work when you're sleeping you want to work on the weekends you like it's not work i mean it's just it's just what you love to do it's so passion. you do it as a second nature like, yeah, yeah, yeah even when you're on like a holiday you're still thinking about it and and what you could do you're just trying to push yourself and push your business to the next level you want to like bring it to be the fullest potential possible mm. would you say like that you master the height of uh, crafting your products or you still on the way there I'm still on my way to it, but I, I think that our products are already better than a lot of the competition out there. Yeah, yeah. It's just that people don't, like, the I exposure agree. has not gotten to where it deserves it to should, be. It should be. But people will catch up. People mm -hmm. will realize, like, um, you know, we're using technology, we're using artisan techniques, like the hand stitching, and marrying that with, for example, um, laser cutting our final product so that it's perfectly symmetrical. Now there's other brands out there that are laser cutting their products but you don't see like the detail that I'm putting into this like even the holes that the thread goes through are completely designed by me. Like Shit. we're designing down to millim like fractions of a millimeter. Like right? I always say, you're it's super crazy. picky. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so tell me, who's been the most influential person in your life and why? Uh, who's the most influential person? It's a good question, isn't it? That's a good one. Yeah. There's been a lot of people who have influenced me in different ways, personally and professionally. So that's why I'm trying to filter through it. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, and I don't want to go with the obvious answer, but my mom, right? I knew She's that. She's been influencing me from the time that I was born, mm -hmm. um, like in all different ways to like shape me and bring me to the point that I'm at right now, like encouraging me and supporting what I'm doing like artistically, even though, like I told you earlier in the interview, maybe she, for some things, it takes her little bit to warm up to it mm. but she would never like discourage me from getting into something if I want to do it you know nice nice um, yeah. uh, looking back at your accomplishment thus far what would you say was the toughest challenge you had to overcome um, probably I don't know like this this business is a huge challenge every day like on a grand scheme it's a huge challenge to be taking on starting something from scratch in a foreign speaking place where i don't know anybody i mean i like challenges so that's why i put myself in this position but sure it's a it's a big one i think mm -hmm. i'm doing pretty good so far and you have your but, girlfriend uh, too now so. yeah now like you know <laughs> i'm getting i'm making one win at a time yeah 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 uh yeah so that's been it's a it's a good challenge to have like i've done and everything in the past it's incrementally getting bigger like anything that used to be my biggest challenge mm. you overcome it and that's like part of life when you you don't accept a challenge if you don't like truly think you can if you can uh, master it you know yeah so this is um this one's a big one to overcome but it's it's, it's gonna happen man nice uh what do you see La Joie 10 years from now or five years from now? It's well, I just want people to recognize the art and the work that goes into La Joie and what makes us different from all the other companies out there, 99.9%. Mm -hmm. like .9%. So far, I haven't found any, but I'm sure there's other companies like me out there. Of course. But, you know, like with... I know everybody puts work in, but I just feel like the way that we're like pushing technology and pushing uh, the tried and true techniques in unison is like unmatched and you don't see it anywhere else. So I just want us to get to a point where literally like everything we put out is a, an event, is literally a, a piece of art. 
But do you see like uh, Lajoie stores across North America or something like that? Mm, yeah, for sure. Would you I, like that? That would be cool. Like, I don't want to, I don't know if they're going to be everywhere. I no, hope no, they no. are. But I want to just, I want the company to grow organically. Mm -hmm. so, like, I don't want it to compromise. And one day we get an order for 10,000 pieces and now we have to change everything. Like, I want it, the products that you see today, I want them to look like to improve and not get worse in yeah, quality. Yeah. There needs to be like a luster and a new aura, like new energy around it, mm. like rejuvenate the whole industry, okay. challenge it. And uh, my last question for you, Jordan, Ontario or Quebec? <laughs> <laughs> It's a good one, eh? Man, Ontario is where my family is, but Quebec is where my home is. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You you won't go you won't you won't go back here living in Ontario. I'm here for a long time. All right, man. Yeah. So Julian, thank you so much. Thank you, man. Any, I appreciate your time. Yo, my pleasure, man. Any final words? Um, just follow us online uh, at Chez La Joie on Instagram, Chez La Joie on Snapchat. And uh, chezlajoie.com on the, on the nice, internet. Nice, man. Yeah. Thank My you. My man. Thank you so much. My man. <laughs> Rap. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like this video. Share it with your friend. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out my buddy Julian's product, okay? See you next time.